Hello you beautiful people, it is Tooth here, Tooth Decay. Today we are going to be making carbonara. We are going to do it as authentic as I possibly can. I'm going to be making the version from Vincenzo's plate. We're going to be doing his 2023 version. I might see about the steaming at the end, because last time I did it I made a right old mess with it. But the reason I want to do this, two reasons I've got. One, I love watching internet chefs, pro chefs. And I'm always curious, can I do that at home? And two, I saw the other day a real abomination to Italian cuisine. It was uh, Justino reviewed a Charlie Bigham's carbonara. It was six pound for a single portion and looking at Dino's plate, there weren't really that much on there either. I know he was a little bit disappointed about that. So he paid six pound for that for an individual portion. There weren't no pancetta in it. There weren't no guanciale in it. There was bacon and there was ham hock neither of which belong in an authentic carbonara. And then it had cream in it as well. You're doing a product that needs to sit on a shelf for a while, you want to increase the shelf life, you can't be putting raw eggs into stuff like that and expect it to last. So I get it, but all of a sudden, you can slap the name carbonara on it, is it actually a carbonara? I'd argue not, but hey, it's probably something that looks a bit like a carbonara, and it might taste a little bit like a carbonara, but it ain't a bloody carbonara. Now. I know guanciale, one of the, the, you know, the pork cheek that goes into a carbonara. It's actually quite difficult to get if you don't live near a butcher's. So certainly not getting it in Tesco at the moment. And I don't live nowhere near a Waitrose. I, so I'm assuming Waitrose probably do it. So what I've got is a lovely bit of pancetta. And I'll be slicing that up into lardons. And then we will be putting that into a cold pan and heating it up to a medium high. And really rendering out all of that fat just so it's crispy but not burnt. We don't want it too hard. And then I'm just gonna set that off to one side and drain it on a paper towel while I get on with the rest of the pasta. So what are we putting in instead of the cream? Well, again, the authentic method. I've got some pecorino cheese and I've got some eggs. And we are gonna be doing, like I said, the Vincenzo's plate version. So it will be one whole egg and another three egg yolks. And we'll be doing 300 grams of spaghetti. And I'm actually gonna be putting in 100 grams of the pecorino cheese. The other thing I've got then in terms of the spaghetti is this brand. Now, don't get me wrong, folks. Normally, I would have Tesco's own. It's about 75p for 500 grams. That one was an offer this time. It's £1.35 for 500 grams. So I wanna see if there's actually gonna be a difference. But the reason I really wanted to get it is because I've just spent a little bit of extra money on a really nice piece of pancetta and the pecorino. So if I'm putting those ingredients right, then certainly, you know, this is only a five ingredient recipe. And one of those ingredients is black pepper. So if I'm gonna be putting, you know, that, that sort of nice quality in there, then I thought, actually, do you know what? For the extra 60p, let's buy a nicer brand of spaghetti and see if it does make a difference. The fifth ingredient then, and I wouldn't normally include this as an ingredient, but because it is an integral part of it, black pepper, this time I am including as an ingredient. It's got to be in there. So this will go in with the eggs before I add the pecorino. And I'm sure it was, it probably was Vincenzo's plate, said carbonara actually means sort of like, I don't know, it's something to do with ash. And so the eggs should be the color of ash with black pepper. If you think about it, I remember on MasterChef a few years ago and they said, we think they've rather overdone it with the carbonization. And what they meant is they burnt it. So carbon, carbonara, you think coal is carbon. So black pepper, you really need a heavy amount of it. Now I will be salting the water, but I'm not gonna over salt the water. Normally when I do pasta, it's almost like seawater. I put, you know, a really, really hefty hit of, of salt into the water for pasta, because pasta's really bland otherwise, right? So I'm, I'm gonna, I am gonna salt the water, but I'm not gonna over salt it because both the pecorino and the pancetta are quite salty. So you've got to be a little bit careful just to adjust as you go along. And I think by the time we've done this, if you like authentic Italian food and you watch some of these internet chefs and you don't want to pay six pounds for an abomination that really isn't a carbonara, even though it says it is, putting a little bit of love into it. I love feeding people. I love feeding me. In case you hadn't noticed, this came out uh, what's going to be £9.38 for two huge portions. So yeah, like I said, £9.38, two absolutely massive portions. So what is that? That's £4.50, uh, £4.50, £4.69, £4.69 a person for an absolutely massive portion versus £6 for an unauthentic Charlie Bigham's 
pre-made thing with loads of preservatives and emulsifiers and everything else in it. This, folks, when you see it, you're gonna wanna have some of that. Let's get the heat on and spread out the pancetta in a single layer so it's all touching the dry pan. And we're gonna add a bit of black pepper as well because one charlie would traditionally have pepper on it so we're gonna try and recreate that. Don't be afraid to go quite heavy with the pepper at this stage. Then leave it alone for a few minutes until it starts sweating. You see a nice bit of color developing on there now. Once that's crisped up nicely, I put it on a paper towel off to one side. And then look at all that rendered fat. There was no oil in that pan. That's all from the pancetta and we're gonna use that later too. I'm adding one tablespoon of salt into three liters of water, far less than I would usually put in. And then we're gonna drop the spaghetti in and to make it fit in the pan, I'll quickly grab my wooden spoon and break it in half. Osh. Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> Let it soften and it will melt into the pan by itself and then give it one gentle stir just to make sure it's all down there and leave it alone. While that was cooking, I mixed together 100 grams of pecorino, three egg yolks, one whole egg, and a ton of black pepper. You can see that's formed a nice thick mixture that will become the sauce for the pasta along with some of the pasta water. The pack says 10 minutes for al dente. I usually set the timer for one minute less than the packet says and then start testing it. That worked out perfectly, folks. So off with the heat and then bring back the pan that was used to cook the pancetta with all that lovely rendered fat still in it. And then transfer the pasta directly out of the pot. Do not drain it first. You are gonna need that water in a minute. Once it's all in the pan, mix it around with all of that rendered fat until it's all been absorbed by the pasta. When you're happy all of that fat's gone, Grab a jug or a large mug and get some of that pasta water out and pop it on the side. Then put the pot back on and turn up the heat, placing the pan on top of it so that the steam will gently melt the cheese and cook the eggs without scrambling them, a bit like a bain marie. Pop most of the pancetta back in, maybe three quarters I guess I used. You want to reserve some to go on top at the end and give a clean, salty crunch. And then mix that in well with the spaghetti. Before hitting it with that lovely cheese, egg and pepper mixture, scrape all of that beautifulness in there and we'll start to coat the pasta in it as it melts. I'm telling you folks, this is so much better than using cream. It is gorgeous. Once the mixture is coating the pasta nicely, we're gonna pop a bit of that pasta water in there. I did put more than what I've showed you in, and this will thin it out a bit and make a really creamy sauce. But remember, no actual cream was harmed during the making of this video. You can see it there in the bottom of the pan. Oh man, I've eaten this already, but my mouth is watering again. And just keep mixing it until you're happy with it and you know that everything's coated. Vincenzo says you know when you've got enough water in there when you can toss the pasta. You know like that move you make to flip a pancake? But I can guarantee you, if I try and do that, it will end up all over my stove. I know my limits as a home chef. That's just not a skill I've developed yet, although I have been practicing. Now we're gonna get it into a bowl. If you can present it nicely, booyah for you. I just wanna scoff this nosh now. Get all the pasta in there and make sure we get all those lovely bits of pancetta out of the bottom of the pan. I probably could have afforded to put a bit more water into this, but it didn't affect the overall quality or flavor. Now we're gonna sprinkle on some of those bits of pancetta that I left to one side and top it off with a bit more of the pecorino that I held back for now. And finally, a few more twists of black pepper. Mm, mm, mm. Right, folks, here we go. We're gonna give this a go now. Vicenzo, I'm counting on you, fella. Oh my God, have some of that. 
you got a level of salt from the cheese you got another level of salt from the pasta you got another level of salt from the pancetta you got heavy black pepper in there and you got that creamy sauce it's just clean to that pasta. That pasta is well worth the extra 60p. I'm telling you that, folks. That sauce just clings to it beautifully. I cannot believe that's the best carbonara I've made. And I normally do Vincenzo's plate recipe. So doing it for you guys has upped my game. Vincenzo, you're a star, dude. Booyah, latest potatoes, off your pot while I have a nosh.